Knobbox Dance presents Let's talk about the Franklin method more than um, it was inspired by hopefully I can say all of this right <laughs> um, <laughs> Abel Elfworth on um, Todd's idea kinesis and Bonnie Bainbridge Cohan's body mind centering and Sri Aurobindo integral yoga right yeah, lots of influences, lots yes. of influences. So what I, is, give, uh -huh. yeah, I would also like to give credit to, I mean, I had a lot of very inspiring dance teachers mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. I recognized certain aspects of what they were doing was really, really great. Right. Um, even though they may not be famous anymore. I mean, Kathy Ward is one of them, Tzvi Gotain is another one. You cannot see any of their teaching really in my teaching. Mm. Uh, just how they taught, how they got people to move better, um, which is wasn't codified. And so I learned a lot from, from those people as well and from personal experience. But at NYU, they taught um, idukinesis. Mm -hmm. And that kind of came out of uh, Mabel Ellsworth's work and out of, you know, Lulu Swigard and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I took class with him basically for as long as he was alive. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, and supposedly I'm the only person he ever gave a certificate to. Oh, wow. So that work I know really well because he didn't do teacher trainings. And I also met Bonnie very early on. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I took yoga classes and, you know, many of the offerings like that. But you see, one of the, the challenges was in somatics and also in dance, we use a lot of imagery. If you take the imagery right. out of choreography or someone teaching, often you have nothing much left. Right. However, imagery wasn't taught to us. In other words, we weren't taught what it is, how it works, how it doesn't work, the different types, the research behind it. There's, there never was an introduction to imagery. Everyone was just like using imagery. Yeah, like metaphorical. And mm -hmm. yeah, metaphors and students mm -hmm. will come up to me and say, oh, my teacher said I should imagine this and that. Can you explain it to me? And I'm thinking, that's not my job. They have to explain <laughs> what they meant, you know? right. And I thought, wow, well, there's a real lack here in, in any kind of scientific background in imagery. And also on a protocol how do you introduce dancers to their own mind mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. dancers you know they have issues <laughs> with often their confidence uh, it's very competitive um they have you know auditions they have strenuous rehearsals they have uh, choreographers and directors that often have difficult personalities <laughs> they have to deal with a lot and um, you have to be mentally very strong to be a dancer. Right. And so I thought we, you know, don't just have to teach dancers more steps. We also have to teach them how to be successful in their mind. Mm -hmm. And that's how it evolved. So if I start a class, um, a dance class, you know, I don't, you know, immediately teach them exercises. I, I say, what are the three areas where dancers have to really excel to be successful. And mm, of course, it's, you know, good technique and it's, you know, conditioning and all those things, but it's also the mind. Right. Every, okay. every dancer has had the experience of things going really well in the classroom and then, you know, comes the performance and they fall apart. Well, that's not a physical problem. That's mm -hmm, a mental mm -hmm. problem. Right. So we can tell that is the uniqueness of Franklin uh, method, uh, dynamic neurocognitive, cognitive imagery using. Right? Exactly. So one thing is we're evidence-based. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of great modalities out there, but you ask them, okay, has what you're doing, your process been researched? And they haven't. And I, I know there's very little research on these things. And we've been lucky enough to publish a, a, quite a few papers already showing that our process really makes a difference and not just for dancers um but also for people with you know diseases or pathologies for example mm -hmm. we did some research also on people who have parkinson's and mm -hmm. um so the franken method what's special about it it's a codified structured um imagery-based approach 
-hmm. for movement retraining and postural retraining. And we're focusing on increasing both the motor and non-motor aspects of performance. So Can what you, that means is, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So what that means is with imagery, and we know this, you can improve range of motion. We actually um, wrote a paper on that. Mm. Uh, we worked on the, the, the Develope paper, DNI and Develope, where we showed that you can use imagery to increase hip flexibility. Um, and of course, motor also means, you know, improving posture, breathing, strength, even you can improve with imagery. There's some re research on that. And mm -hmm. then non-motor aspects, uh, very important for dancers, self-confidence, motivation, concentration, goal mm -hmm. setting. Uh, so all these things come together to promote um, optimal and safe dance practices, which is the goal. Um, mm -hmm. And what we do, of course, is we use embodiment, which is known from other somatic methods, but we always base it on functional dance anatomy. So there's a difference. That's, I think, another important thing. You can't just teach dancers anatomy, like an anatomy lecture, and expect that to do anything at all. It doesn't. Oh, that's what I took. And what I remember my undergrad. Exactly. Like, I remember the terms. At all. I've been to so many university schools saying, oh, yeah, we have anatomy. And then I go, okay. We memorize. Uh, yeah. It's just like, it's not transferred into class. So mm -hmm. um, the way I do it is different. I say, okay, when I start a class, what do you want? What is what is the one thing you would like to improve in your dancing? And then I just like, uh, you know, go through everyone, interview them and find out what it is, like better feet or higher développé or this or that. And then I go, okay, let's start with développé. Mm -hmm. And then I show the dancers as fast as possible that their flexibility can improve if they understand their body better. Mm -hmm. No class, no more training in 10 minutes. And then they go, oh, this is interesting. So if I understand my anatomy, functional anatomy, wow, I can get better so fast, you know, and that inspires them. And I do the same with the mind. I show them, for example, how to improve flexibility using certain imagery. And they go, whoa, all I need to do is think differently and mm -hmm. I move better. They really give them motivation, so right. Mm -hmm. And especially for dancers, it's really important because imagery is free. You don't have to take a class to use it. It's always available. It can be adapted to any kind of dance style. Mm -hmm. um, and, it and it improves all these things we talked about, flexibility, strength, confidence, and so forth. So it's the ideal portable tool that's always there to help you. Thanks for taking your time to tune into Dance Behind the Screen, a bi-monthly interview series where we go behind the screen to question process, product, and social media, be sure to follow us on social media, at KNOW Box Dance. See you next time and don't forget to say no to the box.